This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, we are back here in the lovely studios of Pod Populi Podcast for the people. Um, my guest say, who I'm going to bring in for in a minute, she just looked outside and I said I forgot somebody's name and she said he looks like a Richard. And I'm, I don't know if that's a compliment. I don't know if somebody would want to look at me and say I look like a certain thing. I don't know about that. But before I bring her in, we like to raise a lot of questions here at The Great Love Debate. We are curious people. Everything we do here is driven by curiosity. And I noticed that when people meet another couple or when they um, meet somebody who's newly in a relationship or who've been in a relationship for a while, the first question that people always tend to ask is, how did you guys meet? And I always thought that that was, that was not a question that I would ever ask because I don't care how they met. But people seem to think that their answer is somehow going to trigger a light bulb in them to be like, that's how people meet. Or they're looking for something very, very exotic. I mean, if I'm going to ask that question, I want something like we fought over a parking space and, you know, something happened. I always want a, a cute meet or I want an angry meet or whatever. And so as we get into it, more and more um, relationships are starting with, well, we met online, which isn't a bad thing. It's just as seems kind of dull. Even in the New York Times vows section, they always have a very um, hopefully cute meet story, but every once in a while they'll they'll throw one in there that's just like, we met through friends. And I always want a little bit more than that. I want a little bit more out of my couples. I want more detail. I want more information. So somebody who shares this curiosity, she started a podcast called Elevate Love. It is, uh, I think, one woman's quest to get to the bottom of all things happily ever after. And she's here today. I lured her into the uh, great love universe. Aria Levitt, how are you? Hi, good. Well, how, that was what? a very smooth introduction. I was... What do you think we do around here? <laughs> yeah, it's a very smooth introduction. What, um, what's a nice guy, girl like you doing in a, in a tawdry business of love and, and relationships? What's, what sparked this curiosity one day? One day. Um, well, I do love that, like, how you met story, mm -hmm. right? I like to know. And, yes, it is becoming more and more online, and it's kind of like, oh, we, I thought he was cute. But do you I get mean, disappointed if you get a, uh, they're, they were my next-door neighbor? Like, you're wanting a better answer, right? I mean, I don't know what I, I – <laughs> What are you hoping for when you ask that question? I don't know. I, I like the interesting stories. Like I slapped him across the face and then it was like, he noticed me and it was a br like, a, I don't know, we started making out afterwards or something. Good. A public service announcement. That's not the way people meet. <laughs> That's not the right road to go down. I don't know yet. what kind of bars you're going to, what kind of parties um, could happen, but I where, suppose. Like, something like really crazy happened. But I, Right. Yeah. I want something crazy. I, 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 we all do. And that's why there's, there's a level of disappointment when that story yeah. you know we're almost being judged on the how versus all of the other questions the why what and how did you get to fall in love like those really rarely have anything to do with how people met but we always think well, we got to start at a and see how we got to z so should we start at z then no i don't know i'm not saying you're wrong to ask that and then we've just been doing it it's i don't know if it's habit or laziness or it's it's a non-offensive question okay it's not like when are you guys going to have kids which could be an affection question so it's a question that um, you've been to one of my live shows. I ask everybody where they went to high school. It's a question that most people have an answer to. How you guys met is an answer that all couples have an answer to. So it is a starting point for a conversation. Yeah. Was yeah. that the starting point for a podcast? So you started a podcast wanting to know the how? Yeah, well, I started a podcast because a couple different reasons. One is my parents have a really great relationship and their communication is amazing. And on all that stuff, they've been married like 37 years. It's, it's awesome. Well, I realized like when I started getting into relationships, like not all communication is that way mm -hmm. and not all relationships are what you see on TV either or all these other things. Right. So I was like, Oh, this is really interesting. <laughs> No one gives you a manual on right. how to date and how to have a relationship and you just do. And your parents might set an unreasonable standard for they, these fine young fellows to reach. Very high standards. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, it's like. Yeah, you're chasing that. Yeah. 
Which is hard. Or like in my house, oh my God, I don't want that. You know, it's sort of yeah. the example that you see every day could go a bunch of different ways, but you're like, okay, I know their story. You want to see how many other stories are similar? Well, so I wanted to like, so then I was like, they have a really beautiful one. I've been around a lot of couples that have beautiful, loving relationships. And then I started realizing that not all couples have beautiful, loving, loving no. relationships. That's like a tongue twister, right? Right. Um, and I realized that there's like some that couples that just yell and scream at each other. And I'm like, why are you in a relationship? Like, mm-hmm. is this really enjoyable for you? So that's kind of where this all has like. They don't ask themselves that question a lot too. <laughs> enjoyable is like, nah, yeah. Isn't a relationship supposed to be enjoyable? You would think. I mean, I. Or uh, working towards enjoyable or at least enjoy, enjoyable adjacent yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't. And we talked about that, uh, I think, on the last podcast or couple podcasts ago. I don't think it's a question a lot of people ask themselves. A lot of people are like, can it get to this? Or it's this, but it's not that. And they don't look at, is this enjoyable? Am I happy? You know, is this something that fulfills me? Is my life better because this person is in it? Yeah. Yeah. And it should be. I mean, you should both be enhancing each other. You should both be having fun every day together. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you have some downs, and then you get pass those downs to get to the other side of the up, which is amazing. Are most people happy to share about their relationship or does it depend on how strongly they feel about the relationship? So this is really interesting, actually. I, when I ask a couple, Hey, like you guys would be a great couple to have on the podcast. Like I would really like to you know, know more about your story. The wife's always like, yes, let's do it. I'm in like, let's go. And then a few days later, I'll get a text message from them like, oh, you know what? My husband's just not comfortable sharing about the story. Yeah. I'm most guys. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Um, That's an interesting. So the question that they're afraid to be asked is what? Are these married people? Married couples that are happily have really Maybe good they don't stories. want to share the secret sauce because then somebody could duplicate it and steal their wife away. Is it insecurity? Is it shyness? What is it? It's almost like they don't want to get too personal. They don't want to share like their private. It's like, a little too vulnerable. <laughs> I was going to come up with a really bad well, joke. I mean, they might be. <laughs> they might be afraid. You know, the men, um, it's, it's, when you go to a wedding, mm-hmm. I love the dudes who are super ballsy with the vows. And they are, they love to say it. They're so excited and whatever. A lot of guys aren't like that. My cousin just fainted on the altar. He just passed out. Part dehydration from being hungover from the night before and part nervousness. It was like he was not comfortable being loving and eloquent in front of an audience. Um, that might be a little bit that that women tend to talk more, not to be stereotypical, but that's what we do around here. Our whole business is built on stereotypes. Um about talking about emotion because her friends are going to ask her the feelings and the stuff a lot more than his friends. His friends are pretty much going to be like, is she hot? Does she have any friends? Stuff like that. So this might be one of the first times he's ever had to express how he feels and why and what made them get to this place. So it's interesting. I just had this conversation actually today with somebody about the ego and a guy's ego, like guys, girls, everybody's ego, right? Mm -hmm. We all have this ego and for guys, it's this like that they don't want to express it too much because they don't want to be called something that they don't want to be called. What? <laughs> what don't they want to be called? You can say whatever you want. What, okay. don't, what, what is the word they're trying to afraid? A pussy. They okay. don't want to be called a pussy because they lo- they have feelings for her? Yeah. They like, need to fucking get over that. Yeah. No, but I'm saying. But yeah, like, I agree. I, I'm Pride just, over pussy, <laughs> fellas. Um, yeah, I think that could be it. Like just, but I think you would grow out of that. I don't know. I think your joy is something people would envious. And if they call you a pussy, fuck them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing. I think right. if you have the feelings, express them. Mm-hmm. Don't try to guess. Don't try to like sugarcoat anything. This is who I am. This is what I would like to do for you Yeah, and show it to you. Yeah, I agree. Um, See, I would think if I went up to any, because I've wanted to do this. We're recording this in Florida, and I always imagine Florida to be riddled with uh, old people out having breakfast. Well, I don't know where, the old people are not coming out anymore. Where are they? Is there a deli around here where there's a bunch of, and just go up to them and start interviewing. I've been trying to do this podcast for like two years. I don't see this, um, would old people travel in a gaggle? Is that what's called? A gaggle of old people? A flock? A, a, a gaggle. I like a, a gaggle. A herd? <laughs> You know, where um, I tried to go into a senior community and they're like, nope, COVID, you can't come in. Mm. 
So, yeah, and find out wh- where, because I'm curious about that too. The ones who have been married for 40, 50, 60 years. Those couples, though, they really didn't know any other way because of the expectation. So they made it work. It's almost like the, the, um, the arranged marriage couples. They're, they're not like, what else could I have? They're like, this is it, and we're going to figure out a way to make it work. So originally I started my podcast out that way. I wanted to interview the couples that have been together the longest because I thought, oh my gosh, they have these beautiful, loving relationships. Yeah. Well. They're together out of habit a lot of times. Yeah. A lot of people. Or they've they've been together since they were 18. So like why to get divorced at like, you know, 60, (laughs) you know, like at that point, whatever. They're like, I know this person so well. But I, so I started noticing that not always about like the longevity of the relationship. It's about how strong that relationship is. So it might be just like two years, but you might have this incredible two year relationship with somebody. But then you got to be careful of what I call Roman candle relationships where they go hard and fast early and then they burn out after two years. Yes. So the sweet spot is getting into that sort of, when you're still a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife, before you've segued to mom and dad, because that's a different thing, and that's more of a, the ones who've been together three to five years. Yeah. So they're definitely serious enough. They're definitely committed. There's no question they're each other's wedding dates and holidays and all that kind of thing. And um, where they're at, how they got to this point, and how the relationship works. Those aren't always as easy to find, though, because they're not like wearing a sign walking around at, at uh, Costco, been like, we've been together four years. There's no clock on the head. It you is. assume the old couple's been together for a while. Yeah, no, for sure, I would hope. <laughs> or maybe he's like, nah, it's my third wife. Could be. Could, <laughs> Could be. be. <laughs> no judgment. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I've also noticed like some couples that have also been together like four years or whatever, they might have like really good communication. And you can see that that, that relationship is going to have longevity, mm-hmm. that they are not going to mess this up. They are going to be together forever. We should be um, better communicators now because we talk about communication more. I'm not sure we are. I'm saying we should be. Um, there's a hump that I think couples get over where they have learned how to communicate. And and again, guys, you're going to piss her off and she's going to flip and you have to learn how to, to ride that wave. But there is the, sort of the sweet spot in a relationship that's, I don't know, in the five to eight year range, three to five in there where you learn each other's rhythms and you learn the expectation and you learn their triggers and you learn all those things that should be um, the point where a relationship should be, we have a pretty good handle on who we are and who we want to be as a couple. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know how we, I I mean, how do you go about finding couples that you want to talk to? Is it Um, just, you cast a big net and whoever you can reel in? It's so weird. It just might be coming up in conversation or somebody will just reach out to me and like, Hey, I have this really great couple. Can you talk to them? And yeah, it, it's, it, they just, I don't know. They've been finding me lately. Have you talked Which, to ones that you're like, Oh my God, they should be divorced. They think it's so good. Not yet, <laughs> but that would be a very awkward conversation to have. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I know some marriage counselors and I know some other professions that are like, I can't believe these two people are the last two people to find out they shouldn't be together. You know, like this will not work out yeah. and she does not see it and he doesn't recognize it. And oh my God, what is wrong with these two? So it's working out. Yeah. I, because and they both a, don't see that it's not working. Blind leading the blind. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I think that's fine as long as you, as long as you do it. But once you get this um, pool of answers that will somehow trickle down to your own life, you think you will more learn what to do or more learn what not to do? So for myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm trying to learn more of like what not to do, I guess, or what to do. I don't know. A little bit of both. Do I guess. couples share that more? They're like, we learn to not do this. I learned what she does not like. Because that's probably, or he does not like. I think that is a key. We spend a lot of time thinking about what the other person likes. I think you got to learn how to avoid the potholes and the landmines. Well, isn't there a lot of things that people don't like? I mean, there's a lot of things, but there's also a lot of things that people didn't like previously, and they might that this might not bother them anymore because it might be absorbed into a bigger tapestry of the relationship. I got to bring this back up to your your thing where you talk about the dating profiles, right? And you don't list about things that you don't like, or you don't. 
Right. So why are you, we going to the negative? Why don't we stand on the I'm saying, side? no, that is to get into the relationship. Once you're in the relationship. Stay positive. You should learn. 